Hey, it's Kim and welcome back to Pokemon Breaks. Today we have another installment of my artist showcase series and we're going to be talking about Naoki Saito. Naoki Saito is one of my absolute favorite Pokemon illustrators. They've done a ton of cards that I am completely obsessed with and I'm really excited to talk to you about. Now, Naoki Saito has been illustrating for the Pokemon TCG since Heart Gold Soul Silver. It is a really long time and they've done an incredible amount of cards and there's no way I'm gonna be able to talk about all of my favorites and there's a really good chance I'm probably gonna to forget to cover one of yours. If you have a favorite Naoki Saito card, please leave it down in the comments below. They've done so many incredible artworks for Pokemon and Naoki Saito also does a lot of illustrations for other anime. Hatsune Miku is another one of my favorite franchises and they've done a ton of illustrations for them as well as a bunch of other animes. If you want to check out Naoki Saito's website and Twitter, I will link them down below so you can go have a look. He also makes YouTube videos about his illustration process, so please go check out his channel too. What I mostly wanted to focus on today was some of my absolute favorite Saito cards, and I'm curious to know if I've shared your favorites or if you have other favorites that you'd like to talk about down below. Now, because Naoki Saito has done such an incredible number of illustrations for Pokemon, I'm gonna have to divide this video into two different categories to help me make sense of it. I'm gonna start by talking about full art trainers because they've done some really amazing full art trainer artworks. Naoki Saito illustrated two of my favorite Lily cards, which is saying a lot. The full art Lily from Ultra Prism is absolutely gorgeous. The color palette in this one is stunning. I love the field of flowers and the koi expression on her face is just so alluring and interesting. I'd love to know more about what's going on in this artwork and what prompted Naoki's imagination for it. Naoki Saito also illustrated an absolutely gorgeous Lily promo card that never came out in English. Um, it came out in Japanese and Chinese to my knowledge and it's stunning. It was a special promo. You can see Lily holding her hat behind her. She's gazing back at the camera. Her green eyes are bright and excited. It looks like she's venturing into a city and she's going on a really fun adventure. It's a gorgeous gorgeous card and would have been a super special opportunity to get to illustrate. Lily also features in Alola Friends, which is another very special promo card that came out in Sun and Moon. It's not one that I'm lucky enough to have in my collection. I do know it's a very special card and you can see all of the Alolan trainers gathered together. It almost looks like a candid shot of a group of friends, which is really, really fun. Saito also illustrated Sightseer from Tag Team All-Stars, which is a truly gorgeous full art trainer. It's a really beautiful outdoorsy shot. I really love Sightseer because her face looks so kind and gentle. She looks like she's just having an amazing holiday, having a wonderful time, and she's checking in on you to see how you're feeling. The Full Art Lucia from Celestial Storm has a completely different vibe to the Sightseer. It's fun, it's vibrant, it's colorful, and the expression on her face is just so full of life and excitement, which is a completely different look, and I absolutely love how versatile Saito's style is for this reason. I'd say Saito definitely has a knack for creating really cohesive artworks that depict more than one trainer in the same image. Some examples of this would be Here Comes Team Rocket, as well as the Adamant and Irida cards from Crown Zenith. These are all really beautiful artworks that have a really great dynamic between all of the trainers shown in the image, and it creates a really cool vibe and almost gives you a look into what life in Pokemon world might be like. It's really fun to get to see the characters interacting with each other in this way and I think it's a really cool lens to view these full art trainers through and make the cards much more interesting than they have been in the past. Green's Exploration and Red's Challenge from Unbroken Bonds are a couple of other really cool Saito cards. These ones have a really fun dynamic edge to them as well and you can see the elements kind of building up behind the trainers. I love the clear look of determination on Red's face and the excitement that you can see in green. These are some really fun trainer cards and showcase a slightly different style again. Clara from Chilling Rain is one artwork I definitely need to add to my own collection. It is an absolutely gorgeous card, I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. but. I do think that Saito has done a really good job capturing the personality of the different trainers that he's portraying in these artworks and making them really unique and allowing them to stand out for themselves. Now obviously there are a ton of full art trainers that Saito illustrated that I haven't gotten a chance to speak about. Olivia and Rose, Beady, Mustard. <laughs> 
there have been so many. I picked out some of my favorites and I'm sorry if I missed your favorites. I wanted to move on to a few of my favorite Pokemon cards as well, just to make sure that we have a chance to round everything out. As far as Pokemon illustrations, some of my favorites from more recent sets would have to be the Grookey that was in Shiny Starvee and Shiny Fates. I think it is one of the sweetest artworks. I think the modeled light through the trees just makes this illustration so incredibly special. The quizzical look on this sweet little Grookey's face is just so adorable and I absolutely love it. My absolute favorite Pokemon illustration by Saito would have to be the Mew V alternate art that was in Fusion Arts and Fusion Strike. I have heard this rudely referred to as the Bukaki Mew, which I don't really agree with. <laughs> I just absolutely love Sweet Mew's little face in this artwork. You can see he's surrounded by other Pokemon that are a lot bigger than him. He's got his tiny little hands. He looks a little bit intimidated, but you know, Mew is an absolute powerhouse in the TCG and he's going to make it work. This artwork is one of my absolute favorites of all time and definitely my favorite by Saito. Saito also illustrated the Mimikyu VMAX character rare that was found in VMAX Climax and Brilliant Stars. This one is a really sweet card that uses scale in such a special way. You can see Acerola resting on Mimikyu's chest. I just love the use of texture in this one. Mimikyu almost looks like a big pillow. I love the flowers in the background, the amount of detail in this artwork, and the sweet, contented expression on Acerola's face. It's a really gorgeous one and definitely one to try to find for your own collection. Another really incredible character rare would have to be the Brakeson that was in Silver Tempest. It is a truly gorgeous artwork. You can see this really fun bond between Serena and her Pokemon. I love the use of color and the way that they're interacting with each other, especially the expression on Brakeson's face is so sweet. You can see that they're both having a lot of fun and I absolutely love it. I have not even had a chance to order any triple beat because the price has been quite prohibitive, but you may have seen that Saito illustrated the Quaxley artwork for it and it is absolutely gorgeous. I love the dynamic use of the water in this artwork, the splash and the almost monochromatic color palette makes it really interesting to me. It's a really beautiful artwork and I'm sure that they've got a ton of new stuff coming out for the TCG as time moves forward. Now, similar to Saito's ability to illustrate cards really well with multiple trainers depicted, they've also done some super cool promo cards that have multiple Pokemon involved. Some of my favorites would have to be the World Championships cards that they did in 2017, 18, and 19. They're all super different, really fun artworks depicting different Pokemon from the different generations, interacting and having a great time together. I think that it's really clever to be able to create this world in the card and to be able to include enough detail and balance the artwork well so that it reads well, even though the images are so tiny. Saito also did some incredible Japanese promos during the Sun and Moon era featuring Pikachu. They are so adorable and I hadn't found these ones until I scrolled through Cerebi to do some research for this video and I absolutely love them and I need them in my collection. I think the hardest thing about filming this video about Saito was just choosing which artworks to talk about. He's done so many incredible things and being able to pick and choose which ones to include in this time limited video has been super difficult. One card that I definitely need to add to my collection is the Hoopa promo that was for Sun and Moon. It's a full art Hoopa. You can see there's a shining Rayquaza in the background. There's a Latios flying towards the camera, uh, but my absolute favorite thing about this is just the cute little Pikachu. It's kind of hidden in this artwork, but it is adorable, and Japanese hollows can't be beaten, so I definitely need to find a copy of this one for myself. Another one I definitely don't have in my collection, but I would love to find is the 20th anniversary celebration party promo that he did for Sun and Moon. This is another really gorgeous artwork. It features all of the Gen 1 starters, and you've got this cool 20th anniversary anniversary logo in the background. They're all kind of just flying towards the camera. It's such a dynamic and creative presentation. And I think this is one of those things that probably would have been easy to create in a boring way. Um, but because of the motion that they're all creating, it's such an interesting and exciting card to look at. Now, looking back into some of Saito's older artworks, it's really fun to see how much his style evolved and changed and grew and improved over time. His XY promo, for example, for championships was quite different to the one that he did later on, and I love them both, but you can see how much his style developed if you compare the two. 
A few of my favorite EX cards were illustrated by Saito. The Leafeon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon from Generations are all absolutely gorgeous, and they all feature a really incredible amount of detail and light and movement that makes them super interesting to look at. Another card that I had never ever seen before I was looking up cards to talk about in this video was the black and white promo of Tropical Beach that was for Worlds in 2012. It is absolutely gorgeous. You can see Pikachu having a bit of a luau with a pan sage and a pan seer and a um, pan pour. It is one of the cutest cards I've ever seen. It's adorable. Looking back on these older artworks, I am just so impressed with Saito and his range as well as how much he's grown over time. There's also a super cute bit of promo from Champions Festival. Uh, this was again several years ago and it is absolutely gorgeous. I really love the use of the rainbow and how much fun these bit seem to be having. You've got this little sleepy Oshawa in the foreground as well. It is just an adorable card. Looking back even further into Noble Victories, I really love the Ordino that Saito did for that era. It's a simple artwork and as we scroll back through time, we can see how much the Pokemon TCG has changed and evolved. The cards these days are so much more detailed, but even in these older artworks, you can see the amount of personality that he's able to infuse and it's incredible. Same thing with the Swadloon from Emerging Powers. Very simple artwork, but very telling of a story. I think the expressions that he uses on the faces of the Pokemon, uh, the amount of detail in the background that doesn't detract from the Pokemon itself, but is enough to just keep you really interested just makes these cards stand out. As far as other artworks that Saito's done for Pokemon, he created some really cool posters quite recently that are probably still available on the Pokemon Center website and he's also doing a lot of work for other anime as we talked about before. If you want to see more of Saito's works, like I said, I will link everything down below. Please go check him out and give him some support. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have a favorite Pokemon artist that I haven't yet talked about, please leave them in the comments down below so I can go check them out. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be posting another one next week. Until then, please look after yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye!